Welcome back. You are with us on Let's Talk Money. And this week, we are trying to figure out how to make the best use of hybrid funds to provide a very well-informed asset allocation to the portfolio and also keep your portfolio fairly tax efficient. So let's keep the conversation going. Uh, I, I have a question for Sham because Sham just told us that he actually likes the balanced advantage fund category quite a bit. But Sham, my, my question really is this, that uh, maybe, you know, different AMCs will have a different algorithm or a different formula or a different model that BAFs follow. So, uh, you know, how do you know which one is the best? And, you know, if you, if, since we're on the subject, if you could t tell us uh, any one or two or three balanced advantage funds that you like. Sure. The new element that comes in with the balanced advantage fund is this model. And when you have the model in place, then it is possible that the model might get it fantastically right, but it's also possible that the model may get it wrong. So if I look across the fund houses, I think the one fund house that has been an exception to the pattern has been HDFC, where their balanced advantage fund has reasonably consistently done better than their you know, um, aggressive hybrid fund. But apart from that, as I look across fund houses, I find that more often than not, the aggressive hybrid fund has done better than the balanced advantage fund. So yeah. if I look at ICSI, for instance, or Edelweiss, for instance, their aggressive hybrid funds have done better than their balanced advantage funds. Yeah. Whereas if I look at the five-year returns with HDFC, HDFC's balanced advantage fund has uh, done better than their aggressive hybrid fund. So I think it's worth keeping in mind that conceptually, the balanced advantage fund has the ability to time the market better than an aggressive hybrid fund in that they can sure. reduce their equity exposure quite meaningfully if they feel that that is an appropriate strategy. But what we've seen in the last five years in terms of the performance itself is that the aggressive hybrid funds have done um, better than balanced advantage funds in most fund houses. Okay, fair enough. Uh, uh, Dinesh, come in on this. Uh, so for someone who is young, who will prim primarily have a bulk of their portfolio in, let's say, pure equity funds, but for whatever reason, wants to look at one of these two options, either the equity hybrid fund or the, the aggressive hybrid fund, as it's also known, or opt for a BAF right. in order not to get too carried away and too swayed by, you know, rising equity markets. Uh, what should the choice be between these two categories? Both have equity taxation, right? Yes. So how do you decide what's better? Right. So particularly for someone who has already uh, a significant amount of equity exposure and is looking to sort of diversify away from that, I would recommend balanced advantage fund. With the simple reason being that from a drawdown perspective, you will always find balanced advantage funds having a much better drawdown profile compared to uh, an equity hybrid fund. Mm -hmm. Yes, aggressive hybrid funds deliver better returns. But then when markets go down, they are also likely to sort of have bigger drawdowns. And this is the basic uh, premise of a balanced advantage fund, that when it comes to drawdowns, you should have much better drawdown profile. So okay. for, for an investor like that, I would definitely recommend a balanced advantage fund. Or a, a third fund, which would be essentially a multi-asset allocation fund. Because Where you also bring in an element of commodities. Commodities. And okay. I think my personal belief is in this decade, mm -hmm. inflation expectations stagflation, these are phrases that are likely to become more popular. Mm. And in that kind of paradigm, in that kind of regime, it is important to have that diversification that commodities essentially uh, bring into the table. And let's also talk about realistic return expectations. So, you know, there's aggressive hybrid, there is balanced advantage, and there is the multi-asset category. Taxation-wise, all three are more or less equal because mm. these funds, the strategies will ensure that you get equity taxation. In terms of return profile, what's the range? What should investors realistically uh, keep in mind? Uh, the way I think about it, low double-digit returns should be the basic sort of return profile over a long-term time frame. For all three, For aggressive all three. hybrid, BAF, as well the, as multi-asset. The key is really in terms of the downside aspect, mm -hmm. uh, uh, where, as I said, uh, an, uh, an aggressive hybrid might actually give you slightly better returns, mm -hmm. but particularly when I try to adjust the downside aspect, mm -hmm. then essentially they all sort of fall in line. Okay. Uh, and, and in my opinion, the question that an investor has to ask is, what kind of person am I? Mm -hmm. Am I someone who gets troubled by a 10% drawdown or not? Mm -hmm. If a person is like that, then automatically you have to sort of veer towards the more conservative hybrid funds. Okay. On the other hand, someone is saying that I really am trying to sort of maximize returns within a certain constraint. There, uh, then obviously equity hybrid would be the, uh, or the aggressive hybrid would be the right choice, essentially. Fair, fair enough. Okay, so now let's actually talk about uh, that conservative investor, because not everybody is comfortable taking a lot of uh, equity risk. And, you know, you do want to have a fair amount of fixed income exposure 
in your portfolio as well. So again, gentlemen, here, we let's go back to our category. So you can be in category B, but B with funds which have, uh, you know, slightly lower equity exposure and they don't have equity taxation, but you want to sleep peacefully at night, so you're okay to pay more tax. And then there is the, uh, the last category where the equity allocation is even below 35%. So here, which are the fund categories that you would recommend for such a low-risk uh, investor, Shyam? I think um, one of the categories that uh, has become quite popular now is the equity savings category because, again, you know, through the clever use of arbitrage, they've been able to maintain equity taxation and yet maintain fairly conservative portfolios where the net equity exposure tends to be 30% or even less in some cases. So we really like this category because, like you said at the beginning, so we, everybody wants to pay uh, lesser taxes if they can. So from that perspective, if you have a conservative investor who wants to maintain fairly conservative funds in their portfolio, then rather than having straight debt funds in the portfolio, the equity savings funds have become quite an attractive category. And that's principally because of this tax advantage that they have, where through the clever use of arbitrage, they are able to maintain very conservative, safe portfolios and yet enjoy equity taxation. So we feel, we feel that this is a category that is likely to continue to become quite popular in the days ahead, the equity savings fund category. Equity and just like Dinesh was saying, the a very comparable thing to that is the multi-asset funds as well, because you do get the additional correlation benefit, which is when equities go down, gold or com other commodities have a history of doing quite well. So you tend to get a better outcome as a result of that. Mm. So it is starting to become quite difficult to make a case for a straight debt fund compared to a fund like an equity savings fund because of this tax advantage it enjoys. Fair enough. Uh, Dinesh, coming on this. I'm, I'm talking about the profile of a person who's either retired or approaching retirement, definitely wants better than FD tax efficient right. returns. Right. What's the kind of fund they should look at? Yeah, so there are two options. One is the equity savings fund uh, that Sham just spoke about. The other one would be the conservative hybrid fund or the debt hybrid fund that we... Uh, as we uh, call it. So there, again, the, the only issue is the taxation is one-off fixed income taxation. For the, the uh, conservative hybrid? It's a marginal tax rate, yeah, right. for conservative, conservative hybrid fund. Yeah. And so now, depending on the tax bracket that an individual falls into, uh, 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 that can be a big concern or maybe it's not as much of a concern. Yeah. Yeah. The advantage is that the conservative hybrid fund or the debt hybrid fund essentially will have equity allocation normally in the 25% range. Okay. Which means that, again, from a sleep well at night kind of perspective, uh -huh. it, is a, it is a very apt fund uh, okay. for such investors essentially. So okay. either that or okay. the equity savings fund that, uh, that Sham spoke about because that also tends to be a very conservative fund in general. Okay, great. I think this is really, really helpful. So as we wind down, gentlemen, let's just, uh, you know, recap the things that we investors need to really ask ourselves when we are looking to invest in a hybrid fund. Dinesh, to sum it up, uh, yeah. why do you need it and what should we ask ourselves before deciding which one? Yeah, the number one question is diversification, whether you want diversification and the benefits that it provides. Equities represent the best ways to generate wealth over a longer time frame, but it comes with drawdown risks. So a hybrid fund helps from that perspective. So when you think about risk-reward, hybrid funds definitely add something to the equation. Two, from a taxation perspective, when someone has investments in FD, I think on a post-tax basis, you can easily get better returns mm -hmm. in a hybrid fund. And, and, and from that perspective, there, it's actually, uh, in my opinion, uh, uh, sort of a surefire thing that, that you are better off in a hybrid fund compared to FDs for the most part, essentially. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and Sham, 30 seconds left on the conversation. Things to ask before picking the right hybrid fund. I think one of the things that an investor needs to be careful about a hybrid fund is making sure they know what they are getting. So it's important to look carefully at the equity part of the portfolio. Is it large cap? Is it mid cap? Is it um, growth? Is it value? What kind of portfolio is held within equity? And exactly the same question to ask also about the debt part of the portfolio. Is it long duration, medium duration, short duration? Is it a high credit quality portfolio? Is it a triple A or a double A? You know, what is that? So it's important to look a little bit more carefully about the constituents of the portfolio. But apart from that, for the tax advantages it brings and the automatic behavioral adjustment, I think this category, the hybrid funds category, has a pretty important role to play in customers' portfolios. 
All right. Uh, thank you very much, gentlemen. I think this is a lot of food for thought and uh, a lot of very sensible advice as well, right? Why not look at a more tax-efficient way of managing our portfolios? Thank you for joining in and giving us on all the insights. Sham as well as uh, Dinesh, good to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks so much for having me. All right. Well, with that, it is curtains on this edition of Let's Talk Money. Thank you for uh, tuning in. And remember, keep sending us your feedback, comments, queries and questions. See you again next week. Let's Talk Money 